Gridbox Media Programming is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Scott Hahn, and I'd like to invite you personally to join me and Breadbox Media on August 24th in New Oxford, Pennsylvania. For a day of spiritual renewal, I'll be presenting three talks, one on St. Joseph, one on the Sacrament of Matrimony, and another one on the Holy Eucharist. Learn more and register at breadboxmedia.com forward slash PA conference. I hope to see you there. Introducing the redesigned CatholicSingles.com, featuring new ways that put the spotlight on the person and their faith, not just a profile picture. For the past 20 years, faithful Catholics have used CatholicSingles.com, and the reimagined CatholicSingles.com website is ready to help single Catholics take the next step in sharing meaningful relationships with other faithful Catholics. Remember, CatholicSingles.com, for faith, fellowship, and love. Well, hey, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of Lisa Hendy and Friends. I am very excited this week to revisit a project that we looked at back in the spring. Breakthrough, the movie, is about to be launched on digital platforms and DVD. And joining us this week on the show will be Joyce Smith, whose actual real life story is the fodder for the tremendously dramatic moments that we find in in Breakthrough. I thought we'd start off um, before the interview with just a little listen to the film's trailer, which will remind us all about what this movie is all about. So let's listen to Breakthrough. Rise and shine. Breakfast is ready in 10 minutes. And don't make me come back up there. This is our town. It's a close-knit community, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone. Hi, Miss J. Hey, how are you girls? And we're always there for each other. Nice sermon, Pastor. What do you guys have on for the rest of the day? Well, John has a basketball game. Yeah, I've seen this guy hooping up around here. This kid is so lit. Text your mom tomorrow and tell her when and where to pick you up. And uh, don't do anything stupid. Love you guys. We're training for the Olympics, sir. Cindy. He's been underwater for more than 15 minutes. It's going to be a recovery, not a rescue. I got something. We got him! We've done everything medically possible. There's nothing more we can do. No. Please, God, send your Holy Spirit to save my son. A 14-year-old St. Charles boy who spent 15 minutes trapped underwater is continuing to fight for his life. I don't believe John will survive the night. You don't know my son. He is a fighter. So I need you to be the best for John, and you just let God do the rest. You are my pride and joy. I can't wait to see you shoot those baskets and run up and down the court again. The Smith family asked for one thing. Please pray for John. In the water that day, I was ready to give up. But then I hear this voice telling me, go back. Either I'm nuts or God's talking to you. But I don't believe in God. I believe it. But maybe that only goes so far with something like this. I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to walk alongside you for as long as it takes. Did you see the Facebook page? It's gone viral. Call me. I hope he's going to be okay. We're not going to get through this alone. Whatever you have for me, for Brian, for John, I surrender. Joy Smith was born in Wichita, Kansas, grew up in Ohio, and lived in eight different states as well as Canada and Germany. She and her husband, Brian, now live in St. Charles, Missouri. In addition to John, they have three wonderful sons and five beloved grandchildren. Joyce is the author of The Impossible, a miraculous story of a mother's love and her son's resurrection, on which the film Breakthrough is based. Joyce loves speaking to audiences about what God has done for her family 
and continues to do. Joining us now, Joy Smith. Well, now on the show, we're really happy to have the actual Joy Smith um, portrayed by Chrissy Metz in the film Breakthrough. Joyce, welcome to the show this morning. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Well, such a treat to be with you. And I had the chance um, last spring to uh, to interview the person who plays you in the film and also to meet your son, John. But before we dive into that, I just want to ask you to just um, kind of we've read your actual bio, but just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your involvement in um, Breakthrough as the person who really brought it into being. Well, uh it's uh it's it's really it's really an honor to be able to do this the uh the movie was kind of a surprise we never went looking for it it uh, found us <laughs> uh, uh, pastor sam rodriguez uh saw it on usa today and uh started talking about it on his tv program and my brother-in-law called me said you need to get a hold of this guy and tell him the whole story so luckily I found him on Facebook, you know, where we find everything. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I sent him a message and I said, would you like to know the whole story? The very next day I got a message back. He said, yes, would you like to be on TVN? And I said, I'll shout this story from the mountaintop. So we got there and there was a young gentleman there, very friendly, very kind. And he was talking to us and we thought he was a green room host. So for 45 minutes, we share our story with him. And at the end of that 45 minutes, he looks at us and he says, uh, I don't know if you know who I am or not, but I'm Devon Franklin. And I just finished, I'm a movie producer and I just finished Miracles from Heaven. And I think that's what I want this to be my next movie. I about fell out of my chair. Wow. <laughs> you know, because I never expected this. I didn't go looking for it. And so to fast forward two years later, we have a book and we have a movie. And here I'm just a, you know, a simple person from a small town in Missouri and all of a sudden I'm shoved out into the world for everyone to see. But, you know, it's, it's not our story. This is God's story. And it's, it's, he has done so much to open up the doors for us to be able to share this with the, with the world. I mean... I was a stay-at-home mom for many years, and then we adopted John, and I had gone back into the workforce, but after we got him, I decided I wanted to stay home and work with him. And just the opportunities that that has given us, you know, now I'm an author, now now I'm being portrayed in the movies, and uh, life has really changed for us, uh, being able to travel all over the United States and share this great story, but also to hear the great stories of miracles that has happened to other people. It's it's such an awesome opportunity. I can't imagine. I want to ask you about the book. Um, the book title is The Impossible, The Miraculous Story of a Mother's Love and Her Son's Resurrection. Now, you're saying that the book actually came kind of after the event, um, after the miracle with John and before the movie. How was it to actually spend time writing that book? Well, you know, it it not only talks about John's, what happened with John, but it talks about how the journey I lived until John's accident, how the Lord delivered me. And it was really, it was really interesting because when you start opening up your life like that, you think there's things in there that this is water under the bridge and you, you know, you've taken care of this and all. But I found out that while I was writing the book, there was a lot of things in there that still wasn't taken care of and I had to deal with. So it was like going back and reliving a lot of those things over and over until I finally could surrender them, you know, to the Lord and think, oh goodness, this, he delivered me from these things. And, uh, it was, it was not just an opportunity to share the story of what God did for John, but also what he has done for me during my life. And it was quite op- eye opening for me. That's actually something that really comes through in the film. And we know that with Hollywood, like a movie is never exactly, you know, everything that happens um, in a real life story. So it's why I, I did want to ask you about the book. And how is it for you? Because Chrissy portrays you in a in a fashion that's very open and honest. And we see, you know, the the uh, kind of the heartbreak, but also the humanity of that character that she's playing. How is it for you to have um, opened up your heart in such a fragile way to? 
um, sharing kind of how God has worked in your weakness. Was it hard for you to be so personal and so open about the things that are, you know, maybe not perfect about your spiritual life? Uh, it, it, it was right at first, but when I started to see the effect that was having on others, uh, that others can see that, you know, we're not perfect, yet God will come into our life and he will take care of details in your life and things that's going on in your life that you maybe think is impossible to fix, but God can come in and fix them. So when I was being able to share this, people started opening up and sharing, you know, oh, wow, you know, this is what's happened to me. When I heard this story, this is what I was able to surrender. So it, yes, it was hard at first, but it, it had such rewards for the fact that other people were understanding how God can fix their problems, that he's not afraid of their circumstances. He doesn't wake up in the morning and go, oh my goodness, I didn't see that coming. (laughs) He already knows he has a plan and a purpose for us. And one of the scriptures that we hung on to uh, during John's uh, ordeal was uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I have a plan for and purpose for you, and it's not to harm you, but it's to prosper you. And in verse 13, is the key to that scripture, and it says, and when you seek my face, I will be found. And I found that over and over in my life, when I have surrendered to God, and I've started looking for him, he's always been able to come in and write what has been so wrong in my life. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I want to ask you a little bit about the film. So we're speaking now because we're about to have the release of the digital version of the film, both on DVD and digital download platforms. So um, how involved were you in the the actual um, script control over the film? And did you get to go out onto set and meet the actors who um, played your family? Um, Devon had promised us that for the from the very beginning that he would try to keep the story as close to, you know, real as, as possible, which he did. There were some embellishments on it. Uh, like pastor Jason and I have never said a harsh word to one another. (laughs) (laughs) He's like one of my kids and I doesn't, I don't care what he does with his hair. That all that ought to uh, make people want to watch it alone. (laughs) I don't care what he does with his hair. But anyway, um, pastor Jason was, new at our church when John had his accident. He had only been there six months. And it was a 90-year-old church, and he was putting a lot of changes in there. And people were reacting to it. And so they were running all that through my character. So the things that he talks about happening to him in the movie were actually happening to him. I just wasn't doing it. (laughs) (laughs) But but that's okay. You took the fall. um, (laughs) Yes, I took the fall. But that's all right. That's Hollywood. Um, and the other part of it, uh, that we, yes, we did get to go on the set up in Winnipeg. It was wonderful. And we got to meet Chrissy Metz and Dennis Haysbert and Josh Lucas and Mike Coulter and, and all the different people that were in there. Chrissy Metz is a sweetheart. She is absolutely down to earth. Her character, she is, she's just a genuine person. Uh, Dennis Haysbert could not have been sweeter neither Josh Lucas and my culture. I mean, they were just real people. And one of the things I thought was really interesting while we were on the set, one of the gentlemen that played um, Jill Morrow in the movie of Vic Cedric came to me and he said, I have worked on a lot of sets. He said, but I have never been on a movie set like this where everything was so cohesive and everyone got along and we couldn't wait to get to the set the next day. And I think that said a lot for number one, for God and what he was doing, number two, for uh, Devon and uh, Don Franklin and um, Roxanne uh, Dawson, who was a film producer, for the tone that they set on the set. And also, many people gave their hearts to the Lord working on the set. So, you know, it's a win-win situation all the way around. That's beautiful. I did have a chance um, at, right before the film came out in theaters to interview Chrissy, and she spoke so highly of your family. And I think you, what you're saying about kind of what you see is what you got. Like, she, I just found her so genuine and beautiful. And, and yeah. certainly um, her role in this film, um, her acting is phenomenal. So if you see it for nothing, 
nothing else um, see it for Chrissy Metz but there's so much good here and one of the other highlights for me that week when I was interviewing Chrissy was meeting your son John um, the actual John who was at the film junket he's such a tender age and um, this is so in relatively recent past for all of you how has it been for you to see him go through this experience it's been such a growing experience for him um number one he's just stayed grounded through all of this you know he hasn't gotten all wild and crazy and big-headed i mean he is he's stayed very grounded with it uh i think that's due to so many people around him that helps him being in school and having to graduate also does a lot of that he just graduated this this month he's getting ready to go off to uh, minnesota to go to college uh he's going to be a pastor and he, he is just, first of all, he's just a good kid. But second of all, the Lord has done a lot to just open up the ways and and put in him, him a desire to share, you know, what God is doing for him. Yeah, that's actually, um, I'm I'm the mother of two sons, and certainly they're, they're quite a lot older than John is, but I couldn't help kind of put myself into your shoes of thinking about, I mean, he was out there. When I interviewed him, it was in Beverly Hills at a beautiful hotel, <laughs> and he was there <laughs> on his own, um, taking a little bit of time off of school to do the the press for the film. And I, I kept thinking, oh, my gosh, what trust you must have in him <laughs> as a young man to send him off into all of this. And you must be so proud because one thing that really struck me when I spoke with him was just how genuine um how kind of like you know very self-confident and very eloquent and obviously very intelligent and super handsome too but mostly (laughs) just um just like a great heart and that's something that you can't fake um you know and he's not he's not a trained actor um so when i was interviewing him it was really just so cool for me to see the level of faith that he has at his age with everything that he's been through and how sincere he is and how willing he is for God to use him in the ways that are happening. So congratulations on on that. I know he's still a work in progress, but you should be very, very, very (laughs) happy. Um, Let's talk about, you know, what um, now that the film is moving on to a digital format and um, that we know that the DVD always has extra features, but this enables us to bring breakthrough into our homes what what words would you have for families out there who might be considering um grabbing this film and watching it with their family well you know one of the questions that we have been asked about this and and i'll get to the what your question has been did john see heaven when he died and the answer to that question has been from the very beginning that wasn't the purpose of this film And we feel like the purpose of this film was that if John had had the encounter, that had been one person doing it. But everyone that has been touched by this story has had their own encounter with God, has had their own meeting with God. We have so many people come up to us and say, oh, I saw your movie, and this is what was going on in my life, and this is how God came and met us. And so I think... We had another girl from Madagascar get a hold of us through a private message, and she told us, she said, I was going to kill myself, and I decided to go and see this movie. And when I went and saw it, I thought, if he can do that, if God can do that for John, then he can straighten my life out and give me hope. And that has been our prayer through the whole thing, that the book and the movie wouldn't be about us, but it would be about faith and hope that only Jesus can give to you and to this world. You know, he is the hope of the world. And so if you're going to get the movie and bring it into your home, you know, do it. Look for what God can do for you through this through this story, because we are, he is a respecter of person. He isn't going to do it for this person, not for the other person. God loves us enough that he will do it for all of us. So beautiful. Did you have a favorite moment in the film when you watch it? Is there something that kind of just sticks with you? Yes, there's two places that really, really stick out to me. Uh, number one of them is when Dennis Haysbert, Dr. Garrett, who plays Dr. Garrett, comes out in the hallway and talks to Chrissy, uh, who's playing my part, and tells her all the things that is going wrong with John. 
and that you know he is now well or he's now coming through it and how much of a miracle it is i i loved that part and the other is now this didn't really happen on the roof of the uh uh, hospital, but it happened to me in our pastor's office. I came to a point where I just had to come down and get down on my knees and surrender to God. And that was before John's accident. And we really and truly on the in the movie, she's on the roof and she surrenders everything to God. But that had happened to me in August before John's for John's drowning in January, and we honestly believe, had that point not have come, there had been a different outcome with John. Yeah, and it was just you know, just I loved it when it was Roxanne's vision when the snow starts falling behind her after surrendering. It's it's just really a, an awesome moment for me. Beautiful. And um, I have to ask you about there's a very special song in the film um, and that moment, too. How I know that that's like probably a little bit of Hollywood magic as well. But um, <laughs> how do you feel when you see that particular scene? Um, you know, it, it's just touch. Are you talking about the one when the the, the girls sing when uh, they're singing Oceans or? Is the yes. One, oh, yes. Um, that is a very, very touching scene for me for two reasons. The young girl um, who is is singing that song, you don't see her, but she's singing up, uh, is Taylor. But she is portraying a really sweetheart of a girl that we have, I've known since fourth grade. Her name is Sh- Shayla Gilkey, and she has a beautiful voice just like Taylor. And so to see that, you know, that song and hear Taylor sing it, thinking about Shayla and also knowing that uh, uh, Kirk Franklin came in and did a special arrangement of that and and how this you know how the song just ties into the movie it's beautiful because it, it just generates so many great memories for me beautiful well Joyce I know you're so busy and I'm so grateful for your time um, is there are there any kind of last closing words that you'd like to share with our listeners as they get ready to uh, bring breakthrough into their home or maybe pick up a copy of the impossible to read for themselves I believe this movie is a restoration movie yeah I mean John's life is restored to him but it isn't limited to that. There's nothing going on in your life that God can't restore you from and can't give you hope from. And his, your circumstances never, ever, ever scare him or take him off guard. So, you know, just trust him. That's what I want you to I want people to see in this movie, that God can be trusted and there's nothing going on in your life, no circumstances, no diagnosis that God doesn't have the final word on. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Friends, be sure to grab your copy of Breakthrough coming out on DVD and digital. We'll have links in our show notes to that, as well as a way for you to get a hold of The Impossible, The Miraculous Story of a Mother's Love and Her Son's Resurrection by Joy Smith. Um, Absolutely wonderful book. We'll have links for you over at lisahendy.com in our show notes there. Um, Joyce, thank you so much for the gift of your time and for sharing your family's story with our listeners. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, friends, that's it for this week's episode. We'll be back next week with another guest. Until then, I hope you have an awesome week. God bless. This is international Catholic singer Anna Nuzzo inviting you to join me and Father Dan Cambra of the Marian Fathers on a select international tours Divine Mercy pilgrimage to Poland and the Czech Republic. It takes place in September of 2019, and we would love for you to join us. For more information, go to my website, AnnaNuzzo.com. Thank you and God bless. Redbox Media Programming is brought to you by Jack Kane Ford. Find your next Ford Tough vehicle at KaneFord.com.